This year's San Diego Comic-Con featured lots of Star Trek-related news, including new trailers for the upcoming Section 31 streaming movie and the final season of Star Trek Lower Decks, a sneak peek at the customary wacky Spock episode from the third season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, casting announcements for the Starfleet Academy series, and the announcement of another new series, a half-hour live-action comedy being developed by Justin Simeon, director of the film Dear White People and creator of the streaming series of the same name that followed it, and Tawny Newsom, who is one of the stars of Star Trek Lower Decks and is also a writer for the Starfleet Academy series. Of all the Trek-related stuff to come out of Comic-Con this year, it's this new comedy series that has me the most intrigued. I've long been an advocate of Star Trek embracing its sillier side, and I think Tawny Newsom in particular is a promising choice to co-create a Star Trek comedy series because my generally unfavorable opinion of Lower Decks aside for the moment, she's a smart and funny comedic voice. I'm curious to see what Newsom and Simeon have in store. Reportedly, the show is going to be set on a resort planet located outside Federation space. That's all we know right now, nothing more specific about the premise, no title, no characters, no indication of what the tone or point of view might be. It's early yet, but in the event this show turns out to be good and successful, and as a Trekkie, I hope it's both, and it encourages Paramount to pursue more comedic Star Trek projects, I do have one suggestion. Not about this show or any particular show, more about the overall approach. If the creators of this current era of the franchise are going to continue to make comedies, and in particular, comedies that don't just try to be funny Star Trek, but to make fun of Star Trek, then those creators need to take a lesson from the creators of what is, as of the writing of the script for this video, the number one movie at the global box office. Deadpool and Wolverine. I want to be very specific here, because there are many possible lessons to be taken from the creative and commercial success of the new Deadpool movie and the entire Deadpool movie franchise, and not all of those lessons would necessarily benefit Star Trek. The Deadpool movies are shamelessly violent and raunchy, for example, which I find utterly delightful, but that doesn't mean it's the best tone for a Star Trek show. Deadpool himself also routinely breaks the fourth wall and directly addresses the audience, which I would be curious to see a Star Trek show attempt, actually, since it's never been done before, and, I mean, we've seen so many godlike beings in the franchise already, would a godlike being who knows where the camera is really be that much of a stretch? But that's not what I'm getting at, either. When I suggest that the creators of Star Trek comedies should take a lesson from Deadpool, what I'm specifically referring to is the approach the Deadpool movies take to making fun of themselves and making fun of the genre to which they belong. Not every joke in a Deadpool movie is self-referential or at the expense of the X-Men franchise or superhero movies in general, but the ones that are almost always hit their target and draw blood. I won't spoil Deadpool and Wolverine for those of you who haven't seen it yet, but as you know from the marketing, this movie's version of Wolverine is dressed in a costume based on his iconic yellow and blue outfit from the comic books, not the black leather jumpsuit deal he wore in the earlier X-Men movies. At one point, Deadpool is describing Wolverine to another character, and he has a line where he indicates Wolverine's costume and says, notice how he's not dressed like he's embarrassed to be in a fucking superhero movie? There's another sequence where a legacy character from another movie appears only to be killed in heartlessly brutal fashion not long after, after which his horrific death becomes part of a running joke where Wolverine blames the character's demise on Deadpool while Deadpool vehemently denies any responsibility. And there's another sequence earlier in the film that sees Deadpool literally desecrating the grave and corpse of another beloved superhero who previously died a serious and moving hero's death. It's crass and impudent and disrespectful in the extreme, and it's also funny as hell. It's not mean-spirited, it's too playful and gleeful to be that, but it is pointed. The creators of the Deadpool movies know that there's no point in throwing a punch if you're not trying to hit something. 
Most of the jokes in Deadpool movies done at the expense of the movie itself or its genre are also meta jokes, working hand in hand with Deadpool's fourth wall breaking gimmick, but that's not required for a joke like that. A movie or TV series can make fun of itself or its franchise or its genre without being overtly meta. Galaxy Quest does it over and over and over again, and while it's not quite as take no prisoners as Deadpool, it lands some pretty stiff shots, most of them aimed squarely at Star Trek. Star Trek itself has also made fun of itself in a sharp, non-meta way. On Star Trek Deep Space Nine, there's a running gag that pops up in several episodes centered on self-sealing stem bolts, allegedly very useful pieces of hardware, though almost no one seems to know what they're actually supposed to be used for. A tongue-in-cheek dig at the over-reliance on unintelligible technobabble that plagued much of the Star Trek produced in that era. Star Trek The Next Generation has a subtler example in its sixth season in the episode True Q, when Q, Star Trek's most reliably hilarious character, until he showed up in season two of Star Trek Picard and the writers apparently forgot that he's supposed to be funny, tells Picard that the only reason he visits the Enterprise is to hear Picard make his inspiring speeches. Those jokes might not be as hard-hitting as most of the gags in Deadpool, but they land because they ring true. TNG-era Star Trek is crammed with entirely too much technobabble, and Picard does have a speechifying habit, and because they make no apologies. Unfortunately, some of Star Trek's more recent attempts at self-deprecation lack even the modest edge of those earlier examples. I'm not saying current-era Star Trek can't do self-deprecatory comedy. It can. Even current era shows that I consider to be mostly not very good have their moments as far as this goes. I love Riker's shocked reaction in Picard season three when he attempts to hold Worf's sword and is totally unprepared for how heavy it is. And over the years, Lower Decks has managed a precious few gags that I've found genuinely funny, like Rutherford's subplot in the series pilot where he attempts to ignore a rapidly escalating crisis on the ship to focus on his date with Ensign Barnes, or the the practical and hilariously deadpan sign Dr. Tana makes in another episode to discourage others from playing with a crew member who has been temporarily transformed into a stuffed toy, or the breathtakingly dark sight gag from that same episode when we catch a glimpse in the background of the remains of Spock's gigantic clone from Star Trek the Animated Series displayed hanging from a ceiling like a dinosaur skeleton. The problem is, those and a few other gags are the exceptions rather than the rule. Way more often than not, when current era Star Trek tries to make fun of itself, and Lower Decks is by far the worst offender here, it does it in a way that is shallow, toothless, and seemingly intended not to take the piss out of Star Trek or get a laugh, but to give Star Trek a loving tickle under the chin while reminding the audience how unquestionably awesome it is. It's kind of hard to effectively make fun of something if your starting point is, this thing is unquestionably awesome, you know? None of this is to say that I think self-referential or self-deprecating comedy must necessarily be self-hating or mean-spirited. I don't think that, and I'm not suggesting Star Trek's comedic ventures should go down that particular road. Self-deprecation begins with honesty. I don't make fun of myself because I hate myself. I make fun of myself because I recognize my flaws, some of them, at least. The creators of the Deadpool films don't make fun of superheroes or comic books or their own characters because they hate them. All you need to do is watch the movies to see how much Ryan Reynolds and his collaborators love this material, but Reynolds and the assorted writers and directors he's worked with to craft the three Deadpool films don't feel the need to constantly reassure the audience that actually they're only kidding, and the truth is they love comic books and superheroes and think they're great, and if you love those things, then you're great too. Let's all have a big hug, come on! The Deadpool movies have heartfelt moments, and those moments are important and contribute greatly to the quality of those movies, but they don't undercut or water down or lessen the impact of the jokes, and the jokes themselves are fucking ruthless. If self-deprecating humor isn't honest and isn't unqualified and isn't ruthless, then there's no reason to engage in it at all. 
If you tell a joke at your own expense or at the expense of someone or something you love and you don't throw that punch as hard and as accurately as you can, that lack of commitment comes across and it's deflating. It can kill the laugh completely. When Lower Decks makes fun of Star Trek, it almost always does it in the gentlest, most affirming way possible. Hey, this Nick Licardo guy sure does look a lot like Tom Paris, doesn't he? Wink. Oh, but we love it, don't we, folks? Watching Deadpool is like watching Don Rickles at the top of his game. Watching Lower Decks is like watching a hack you've never heard of pander to the crowd at a Star Trek convention. Most of the time. Like I said earlier, Lower Decks has occasionally come with a good and surprisingly stiff Star Trek joke. One of the reasons I love that sight gag of giant Spock's skeleton so much is because of how uncharacteristic it is compared to the rest of the series. Instead of a shallow reference or a manufactured bit of wholesomeness badly disguised as a joke, it's an actual joke. And it's not only at the expense of Star Trek, it's at the expense of the audience that Lower Decks predominantly attracts. Fans who are suckers for those references and contrived feel-good moments. It's as if the show is saying, oh hey, that giant clone of Spock from the animated series, remember him? He was pretty cool, right? Look at him now! If Lower Decks went for the throat like that more often, it would be a lot funnier. Its incessant canon tourism would be a lot less tiresome. And I'd probably like it a whole lot more. When you make fun of yourself and you really let yourself have it in a truthful and brutal way, if you do it right, it's not only funny, it exudes confidence. It shows the audience that you're aware of your flaws and you're strong enough in yourself to not only admit to those flaws, but to use them to make light of yourself. On the other hand, when you make fun of yourself but you pull your punches, it plays like you're downplaying your flaws, like you're afraid to fully own up to them. Like you've been asked to describe your greatest weakness and your answer is, I work too hard. The frustrating thing is the creators of Lower Decks obviously love Star Trek. And people who love Star Trek, who love it in an honest, critical, clear-eyed way, have all the best jokes about Star Trek because we know where all the soft spots are. We've seen all this shit. So with Lower Decks ending this year and Tawny Newsom and Justin Simeon's new Star Trek series on the horizon, I'm hoping the franchise can turn a page and start its comedic endeavors fresh. The Star Trek franchise doesn't need a comedy series that's constantly telling the audience how amazing Star Trek is. If we're watching, we probably think Star Trek is amazing already. We don't need Star Trek itself to tell us that or to pat us on the head for having that opinion. Thank you very much. What a Star Trek comedy series needs to be, before it is anything else, is funny. And if it's going to try to be funny in a self-referential way, in a self-deprecating way, in a way that makes Star Trek itself the butt of the jokes, the knives need to come out. Follow the lead of Deadpool. Hold nothing sacred. Make no apologies. And for God's sake, turn the comedy phasers off the stun setting.